truth for life. January 26th, when things don't go your way. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Ephesians 4.31 Most, if not all of us, know what it is like to wake up with the thought that life isn't anywhere near what we would like it to be. Perhaps you felt like that when you woke up today, physically, emotionally, relationally, financially, and even spiritually. We may be facing especially difficult days, and as a result, we are tempted to become disillusioned. What are we to do? One helpful place to start is by asking God for his protection from three powerful sources of spiritual trouble the silent killers of bitterness, resentment, and self-pity. These three will slowly strangle our faith and spill over into envy and malice toward those who have what we so want. So in the situations we face, perhaps known only to us and to God, we need his help in responding with soft hearts instead of harsh spirit, harsh spirits. In his letter to the believers in Ephesus, Paul encouraged, in fact commanded, them to put away all bitterness, wrath, and anger. While it's easier said than done, Paul's command itself is that straightforward. In fact, there's never a command in the word of God that we cannot obey, no matter how difficult it seems. For God always empowers what he commands. So if he says, get rid of something, you and I can be certain that he can apply the power of the Spirit within our lives to enable us to do what he's commanded. When we live with bitterness, resentment, or self-pity filling our hearts, then we have only ourselves to blame. Much as I may want to, I can't put the responsibility on God. One individual who could have argued that her circumstances legitimized these three poisonous feelings is Hannah, whose story we read of at the beginning of 1 Samuel. She must have battled each one, battled each one as another month passed by without her falling pregnant, and as another day brought the taunts of her husband's other wife and the sight of the children God had given to that woman. But she took her frustrations and sadness, and she did something good with them. She prayed. She poured her heart out to God, and knowing she was heard, she walked away at peace. Although at that point her body remained infertile and her circumstances remained unchanged, her spirit had been freed by her Heavenly Father. God protected Hannah from the silent killers of bitterness, resentment, and self-pity. And he will protect us too. You don't need to stay awake at night then trying to ensure that your life works out how you want it to. And you don't need to be dominated by that sinking feeling upon awakening to another day of unwanted circumstances. Rather, you can use those moments to learn the value of leaving your heart's questions and the situations you don't understand in God's care, which after all, is exactly where they belong. 1 Samuel 1 The Birth of Samuel There was a certain man of Ramathame Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jerah, Jerohim son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, and Ephrathite. He had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, 
where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina his wife and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord. She used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep, and why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, If you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. And she continued praying before the Lord. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart, only her lips moved. And her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli took her to be a drunken woman. And Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman. For all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they bat- Then they went back to their house at Ramah, and Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. Samuel given to the Lord. The man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice, and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, so that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and dwell there forever. Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him, And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine. And she brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who was standing here in your presence, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed. And the Lord has granted me my petition that I made to him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there.